Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, we have much stuff and things to talk about, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays, and there is a lot to look forward to on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. We are going to get into something, and it's something that we've been covering a lot the Dan T. Blend Old Ironsides, but there were some questions raised with the review that I posted last week, and I'm going to ask the question and hopefully answer the question, did I get my review wrong about Old Ironsides? We're going to get into some feedback about that, some communication I had with Dan T., all that good stuff, so that's coming up. And then, of course, we have your questions, comments, and feedback. Where is it? In hashtag... Ask stuff and things. I have a lot of notes, a lot of things to get through. I did a lot of research for this episode, so please look forward to it and stay tuned. Okay, what can you look forward to on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays? Well, first of all, I mentioned that I was going to be reviewing a wallet, and I have the wallet in hand now. This is the Pioneer Carry Flyfold 2.0. It was sent to me by Pioneer Carry. They are based in San Francisco, California, United States. And this is something a little different for the channel. This is a bifold wallet. And I have not reviewed, I don't think I reviewed a single bifold wallet. Typically, I'm reviewing things like this. A minimalist wallet. This is my Saddleback front pocket ID wallet. Probably still my favorite wallet that I've ever reviewed on the channel. I think this was the first wallet that I ever reviewed on the channel. It's just a nice piece of leather. It's slim. It's compact. It fits everything I need. And I just keep going back to this over and over. And this is typically what I like. A thin, slim wallet that I can fit in my front pocket. So this is a little bit out of the realm that I typically delve into with wallet reviews, which is kind of why I did it. And it's made out of a really interesting material. So this review will be posting this week on Stuff and Things, so please stay tuned for that. Then we have Dan T's Salty Dog. This is coming up. We'll be doing a first impressions video and a full review. We will also be doing soon something on Seattle Pipe Club Virginia Jazz. That's coming up. We will be doing the Timeless Style Levi's Trucker Jacket video pretty soon. And then, of course, on Stuff and Things Plays, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have the Elden Ring series still going on. I don't know when this game will end. I hope it ends before The Legend of Zelda. What is the actual uh, title? It's Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's the sequel to Breath of the Wild. So we need to check in with the beautiful little elf boy on Stuff and Things Plays. I think that's in May. So hopefully we'll be done with Elden Ring by May. But stay tuned. Lots of good stuff on both channels. But now, gang, it is time for the topic of the show. So, last week, I posted my full review of Dan T's Old Ironsides, and it was a blend I liked a lot. I think I wapsed, wapsed, I rapsed, <laughs> I waxed rhapsodic about that blend in both the first impressions video and in the full review. But I got an interesting comment from a viewer called JS. Let me read it for you. I'll be reading some more of your feedback on that full review when we get into hashtag ask stuff and things. But this one I picked out specifically because it prompted a whole bunch of research and checking up on my part. So this was from JS, and JS said, uh, this is a comment on the full review of Old Ironsides. Coincidentally, I had a bowl of this today. Love the blend. On their German website, DTM, Dan T. Manufacturing, I think. I'm not sure exactly what DTM is, but for Dan Tobacco. Only mentions Virginia and Latakia as ingredients for this blend, and I can't personally detect any Orientals. My palate isn't as refined as yours, however. So I thought about this, um, and I was pretty much absolutely certain that I was tasting Orientals in the blend. And just to give you guys a little bit of background on when I do a review, I try not to look anything up about the review when I'm actually trying it, or about the blend while I'm actually trying it. So obviously for the first impression video, I don't really look anything up. 
then I have it for a week or two weeks after the first impressions video and I still don't try to look anything up because I don't want my review to be colored by other reviews or other information out there. The power of, of suggestion is a very strong thing. It is real. And if you read, like, if someone puts a review out there and says, oh, the Perique really tasted like this, I really noticed the Perique, then in your mind you will have that there and you will be looking for that taste. And maybe you'll convince yourself that you taste that little, uh, peppery tweak of Perique in the blend. And so I don't want any sort of suggestion like that in my brain before I do a review. So with Old Ironsides, it was the same. I had it for two weeks, I think, or no, maybe it was just a week with that one. I liked it so much that I almost finished the tin in a week. And I wrote down my thoughts. I keep little notes as I'm enjoying a bowl every once in a while. And to me, the Orientals were very prominent. It was very much a Balkan blend for me. And so to have JS say this, I was thinking, this can't be right, but let me look into this. So, oh, and then once, once I'm finally ready to write the review, I write my review out and then I'll check out some stuff. I'll check out who manufactures the blend. Usually I know that previously, but sometimes there are parent companies and other things like that. I check out the availability. Um, I check out what the official uh, ingredients list is and see if that agrees with what I have noticed in the blend. And so I had checked that out with Old Ironsides after I had reviewed it or uh, enjoyed it for a week and had written my review. And most of the uh, American websites anyway agreed that it was Virginia, Latakia, Kentucky, and Oriental. But then I started looking further and I did look at the German language website for Dan Tees and it was true. They only list Virginia and Latakia on that website. They also had a different description on the tin. It said a full Virginia and Latakia flake or something like that. On the American tin I had, it didn't say that. It just said something like a mature Latakia flake or something to that effect. And so I thought, hmm, interesting. So then I went on treviews.com and I started reading some of the reviews on there. And a lot of people were mentioning the Orientals. Some people were not, and some people were saying that it was a huge Latakia bomb and that it was overpowering with the Latakia, which was not what I noticed at all in the blend. It definitely had a lot. You can tell when you rub out the flakes when you have this black dust all over your fingers. It probably lets you know there's a lot of Latakia in the blend. And I could definitely taste it, but for me, the Oriental was sort of the main, the main event in that blend. And so I wrote back... Um, Oh, and I also noticed that some people were saying that maybe the formula had changed a little bit. People, there were reviews back from like 10, 15 years ago. So anyway, I wrote back to JS and said, thanks for watching. I actually did some research on that after your first comment. I definitely taste Orientals, unmistakably in my opinion, but you're right in noting that the Dan site lists only Latakia and Virginia. I noticed that the description on the tin is different on the, Germ on the German site as well. Uh, mentioned the information I just gave you. <clears throat> Um, every U.S. retailer I could find lists Orientals in the ingredients except for smoking pipes, which lists Perique, which I thought was strange because I didn't really notice any Perique. I'm fairly certain I didn't notice any Perique. I then looked at some old reviews. It seems that the oldest reviews mention over and over that this is a lap bomb, something I didn't experience either. Definitely a highish component of Latakia, but not overbearing at all in my experience. More recent reviews mentioned a possible change in formula, and many commented on the Orientals and the Balkan nature of the blend. Interesting. My first tin was the one I had for review, so I can't speak on any changes which might have occurred. Perhaps someone who's had old Ironsides um, 10 and 15 years ago and also a fresh tin can clue us in as to whether or not there has been a change. So, um, I actually wrote to Dan Tees. I went onto their German language website and I banged off an email and I wasn't expecting a reply because I have written to a lot of manufacturers, a lot of blenders, and not a single one has ever responded to a message that I have sent. It's kind of annoying because I would love to have information direct from the manufacturer or the distributor as to what exactly is in each blend. It would be great and really useful for my reviews, but no one has ever replied, ever. But the very next day, I got a reply from Dan T. So let me read to you the email that I sent. I said, hello, my name is Bradley, and I run a YouTube channel with nearly 50,000 subscribers on which I review mini pipe tea blends. Recently, I reviewed your Old Ironsides blend. I thought it was delicious. When reviewing Old Ironsides, I was sure I noticed Oriental teas in the blend. 
I'm located in the U.S., and most U.S. online retailers also list Oriental tea as one of the ingredients, along with Latakia, Virginia, and Kentucky teas. I was surprised when I went on your website and saw that the only two ingredients listed were Latakia and Virginia. Is this true? Is there any difference between the version exported to the USA and the version listed on your German website? Or was I just imagining the Oriental tea in the blend? I'm pretty sure it was there, but I'd be curious to see what you say. Uh, my viewers would love to know as well. Thank you so much for your time. Kind regards, Bradley. And then I sent links to the two videos, the first impressions video and the review. More information. On the G JS thread, we had a response from J. Co. Hi guys, I'm from Germany. Visited Dan T. A few, a few days ago and talked to Michael Appitz about the blend, the blender of Dan T. There is definitely no Perique in the blend. They only use different Virginia grades and Orientals, of which nearly all are made to Latakia. The American history line should bring natural tea blends to the U.S. market with no added flavor. Every blend is a little different and has different focus, so most Essers can find their favorite kind of English blend. So interesting, it was confirming that there was Oriental in here, saying there was no Perique, and saying there was no added flavor. Almost every blend has some added flavor, so I thought that was kind of interesting to hear, uh, supposedly from someone from Dan T's. But then the response I got to my email was from a very nice woman named Maria, and she says this. Dear Bradley, thank you so much for your message. Your review means a lot to our entire team and shows us that we are on the right track with our efforts to produce good pipe tea for our customers. The Old Ironsides is part of a series of four tea blends, Liberty, Midnight Ride, Patriot Flake, and Old Ironsides, that we originally developed with our sister company, Dan Pipe, and our U.S. importer. That's why we decided to use labels that can be associated with U.S. history. That answers my question that I had about that. There is no country-specific difference in the tea blend. Our Old Ironside consists of, this is interesting, Cyprian Latakia, Indian Virginia with high sugar content, Kentucky, Lebanese Orient, interesting. I thought it might have been Turkish, but it was Lebanese, which maybe describes or explains the more incense spicy quality to it. And Louisiana Perique. Fascinating. In the flavoring, or for the flavoring, we use only invert syrup, which is basically simple syrup, and honey. Due to the fermentation and sweetness of the Virginia teas, this blend does not require any other additional flavors. So added flavoring, but very minor honey, simple syrup. You're not going to really notice that in the blend other than maybe just in the feel and the sweetness. We would be delighted if you continue to explore tea blends and find them enjoyable and satisfying. Once again, thank you very much for this fantastic feedback and for being such a great customer. With best regards, Maria A. Souza. So... Right from the horse's mouth, we say, or we hear that there is Cyprian Latakia, Indian Virginia, Kentucky, Lebanese Orient, and Louisiana Perique. This disagrees with what J. Coe says he heard from Michael Appitz. Who are we to believe? I don't know. Maria was very specific, um, even about the toppings that they put on the blend. They both agreed that there are Orientals in here, so I'm I'm pretty certain that I was right about that, and this isn't some really long-winded way for me to say, aha, I was right, but I'm typically pretty good at detecting what's in a blend, and definitely with a blend like that that was so very obviously oriental forward to me, I was pretty sure I wasn't wrong about that, but it's fascinating to hear from two different people. I know for sure that Maria is with Dan T, and I'm going to trust J. Co. when he says that uh, Michael Appitz was from Dan T., they disagree about what's in the blend. And that just highlights how difficult it can be when you're trying to look up information about these blends. I just go based on what I can taste. But it would be great if there was an actual database with verifiable information that tells us exactly what's in each of these blends. The fact that so many of these blends are made in so many different places, in Europe, in the US, all over the world, it's difficult to unify all this information. And even when you look on a place like treviews.com, they don't always agree with the information that you'll find listed on the manufacturer's website or in blurbs on the tin. So it's all very nebulous. 
It's great that I actually got in touch with Maria and that they actually responded. I would love in the future if I do more Dan T blends to get maybe a little primer from them on the blend. Let me know what they say is in it, the actual ingredient list. Um, but I, I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. It just shows you how we're kind of guessing, I guess, about the absolute specifics. I think with broad strokes and even some of the nitty gritty stuff with what's in the blend, I can tell if there's a lot of key in a blend for sure. I can tell if there's Virginia. I can usually tell if there's Kentucky. It depends. Sometimes it's just kind of a filler. And I can definitely tell if there's Oriental. I didn't notice any Perique. Michael Appitz said there was no Perique. Maria says there was. I don't know. Um, I didn't notice it specifically. It might have been just a little bit of a condiment, and there was so much spiciness from the, for the, from the Orientals anyway. I don't know. I just found that fascinating. I hope that clears some stuff up for you guys as well. I think we can all agree that there is Oriental in there. There's Virginia. There's Latakia and Kentucky. Actually, did he say there was Kentucky? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it says, definitely no Perique. Virginia's Orientals. Yeah, they don't mention Kentucky either. Michael Appitz didn't. But Maria did, and every other description I read did. So, I don't know. Fascinating stuff. I hope that clears it up for some of you out there. And that will probably be the last time we talk about old Ironsides. But we will definitely be talking about more Day and Teas in the future, including Salty Dog. All right, gang, but now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer you. You can also write to me via Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter and go to the front of the line. You can leave a super thanks on a YouTube video, go to the front of the line as well, or leave me questions, comments, feedback on my YouTube channel comment section on my videos. And I read through all of those and try to pick out questions and such. But first, from Scottum via YouTube, and a super thanks, thank you Scottum. Scottum says, like others, I found you through the pipe hobby. Similar to watching the History Channel, it may not always be a subject I'm very interested in. However, I watch and I learn, and perhaps sometimes that knowledge may help me in a conversation down the road. Your content is appreciated. And you're appreciated, Scottum. Thank you so much. That was feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things where I was talking about Basically, for once and for all, saying this has always been about stuff and things. It's never been just about pipe teas, and I, I kind of laid that out for everyone. I might actually break that little section of last week's Sunday Stuff and Things out as its own video, and then whenever I get that comment, I can just refer them to that video. We'll see. Uh, and not Scottum's comment, but the Scottum he the comment that he was commenting on. Next, from Mushroom Leg via YouTube comments, they ask, Bradley, random question, have you ever ridden a jet ski? And how did you feel whilst doing it? The fact that they said whilst makes me think that they're probably from the UK. Um, I have ridden a sea doo See, when I was a kid, a jet ski was something that you stood on that was like smaller, and then a sea doo was one that you sat on that you could have two people on. That was my the distinction that I knew in my head. I think maybe people call jet skis or they call everything a jet ski now, so even the ones that you sit on that can hold two people, I don't know. But I've definitely been on a sea do, and it was fun. I've only done it once, I think. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Next, we have some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. This is from our good friend and Patreon supporter, Ryan McFadden. I've been here since pretty much the beginning. I, for one, love the eclectic nature of your channel. It keeps things interesting. I feel like I've learned a lot over the years. Keep up all the awesome work, man. Thank you, Ryan McFadden. And there were so many comments on that video, and I don't want to make it seem as though I was fishing for reinforcement or something. I just wanted to set the record straight, but so many of you wrote the similar comments, so I just picked out some here. Uh, this is from Roadkill. You sure the journals and airbrush video are you sure that the airbrush video and journal videos are more popular? Or is it because people don't make pipe videos because YouTube won't let them earn money and it seems like fewer viewers because pipe essers left YouTube because the content isn't recommended in their feed and it's all age restricted? I subbed because of your pipe content, but I also found some of your non-pipe videos entertaining and informative. Thank you, Roadkill. And I do think that the, the audience for pipe videos is just by its nature much smaller than the audience is for journals or wallet reviews or fountain pens. Even though fountain pens is a very small niche thing, it's a much larger niche than pipe tea is. 
It's just a fact of life. I'm not lamenting that fact. I'm somebody who's obviously very into it. I know many of you out there are as well. But um, I don't think it is a marker of worth or anything. Depend like if if eighty if a hundred thousand people in the U.S. were into pipe tea, but two hundred thousand people were into journals, and I don't think those numbers are anywhere where any anywhere close to what they actually are. It doesn't mean that that makes pipe teas less valuable as a thing to be into. It's just a fact of life. I think it's a very niche, very 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 tiny tiny hobby. Uh, next, from Thorgim, I have to admit, I always took stuff and things literally. I always appreciate your T and S accoutrement videos and take my pick from the other subjects. All good, though. Thank you. Next, from Gordon Gladstone, I too prefer the T reviews, but you've introduced me to new things and entertained me since 2018. Thank you, Gordon. And I do hope that me kind of showing you things on the channel... And it's not a way of me saying, like, you should buy these products or anything like that. It's not about com consumerism, but just about, hey, here's something I like, something that you might enjoy as well, and maybe I have introduced you to something that you also enjoy. And that is great. Uh, next, from Hallie's Ledger and Lace. What? This is a tea channel? I thought it was about fountain pens and notebooks. I remember the days when you actually did S your P, when it was a pleasant Sunday S. Came for the stationery, have stayed for the commentary and witty repartee. Thank you, Hallie's Ledger and Lace. We have some feedback from the old Ironsides review. This is from John Smith. And like that, this blend will be even harder to find. From Briar Bear. Bastard, you caused a run on it, and now it's out of stock. Several people have said things like this when I've really liked a blend, and I don't know if I actually believe it, and I'm curious to know, does that happen out there? Have, have any of you no, actually noticed this, or is it just a coincidence, or are these blends that are already kind of hard to get? I'd be curious to know that. Um, and again, that's not to stroke my ego or anything, it's just something curious. Uh, next, from Heim Batman. These reviews are obviously pretty well respected because they're like a run on the bank. You can't find this anymore at the moment, LOL. From Frank85, I really agree with you. Old Ironsides is such a delici delicious dessertish type of blend and truly belongs among such legends as Nightcap and Ashton Artisans. But I can't help myself, and for me it really hits the spot along with my morning coffee. Cheers. And from Chris Portislander, great review. I bought some and look forward to trying it. I hope I got the apparently newer Oriental Forward version, saw the discussion with JS below, by the way, if you get a day-old croissant or dryer, what is your favorite method to rehydrate a blend? I use Beveda 65% packs for my, for my cigar humidor, but I read that pipe teas require a lower relative humidity. Thanks. Um, yeah, and as far as getting a different version, apparently there aren't different versions, according to Maria, so you should be fine. And I use these little humidifier buttons. They are made in Hong Kong, humidifier in cold water. Uh, I don't know what this brand is, but you can find them on uh, essingpipes.com and other websites for uh, just look for like pipe accessories. You will find these little buttons. You can soak them in cold water. If you have really hard water, you probably want to use distilled water to soak them in, not tap water. And then I'll just throw these in to a tin or a bag or a jar, most likely a jar, and that will rehumidify the pipe tea you don't want to use uh, the same kinds of humidifiers that you use for cigars because, yes, you don't want quite the same amount of moisture content with pipe teas as you might for cigars. Uh, but yeah, these work great. I don't do it all that often because you can have a blend that's fairly dry and it can still be fine. It just depends on how you pack it and everything. But gang, thank you so much for all the feedback. Please keep it coming in. Your comments, your feedback really help give me things to talk about on this channel. It's great to interact with you, so please keep all that coming in. But now, it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and it is a huge help, because if we are talking about pipe teas, if we do a specific video about a blend, a review of first impressions, or anything like that, it can't be monetized, so it really helps to pay for the fancy camera, the lights that are shining upon me, all the good products that we can get for review on the channel. And every week, I like to thank those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Kirk Crompton, Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, MD of the North, David Godrew, Nick Papagiorgio, Finn O'Hagan, 
and Ryan McFadden. And of course, we can't forget the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month, people like Bob McGee. And we will never forget our Hall of Fame member and our dearly departed friend, Peter Straub. Gang, thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for all the good stuff coming up. Next up is the Pioneer Carry Flyfold 2.0 wallet. After that, we'll be getting into Salty Dog. We've got stuff coming up for Virginia Jazz. We've got the Levi's Trucker Jacket. We've got Elden Ring every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. It's <coughs> a lot of talking. A lot of talking in a short amount of time. Wet the old whistle.